So my talk is on chronic kidney disease in Japanese uh, people living with HIV. Um, and then I would like to talk about the xenophobia, actually TDF, nephrotoxicity, among the people living with HIV. When I was given this topic by Dr. Oka, I was a little bit worried because in Japan, um, the new product for the xenophobia, um, xenophobia uh, arafanamid, is commonly used, and the t I mean, it's not often we see TDF used for the patient in Japan. However, we have many international experts attending this meeting, so I think this talk will be relevant to the, to the experts who are still using TDF in your country. If I have uh, time left, I would like to also talk about the utility of urinary biomarkers for the prediction of renal function among people on TDF. So I think TDF is still very much used in this world. It's a first line treatment in the director guideline and then also a main medication in the many of our countries. Um, let us review a little bit about the uh, chronic kidney diseases and the also TDF nephrotoxicity. So uh, renal function we estimate, we calculate as an estimated, um, no. Estimated glomerular filtration rate, we call it EGFR, which is calculated by the function using serum creatinine, AIDS, sex, and S3. And the, in Japan, this equation is recommended by the Japanese Society of Nephrology. And then, what is CKD, chronic kidney disease? It's a status where EGFR is um, less than 60 or persistent proteinuria, at least for three months. So we call it, this is CKD. And then it's a risk for progression to end-stage renal diseases and then many other comorbidities. EGFO decreases as people get old, approximately one milliliter per minute per uh, 1.73 square meter per year. And then in general, we consider the LT slows EGFR decrement. Now, xenophobia. Xenophobia is excreted by both glomerular filtration in the kidney and also with the active tubular secretion. So this is, xenophobia is secreted by the tubular, renal tubular. However, xenophobia is known to cause mitochondrial toxicity in renal proximal tubular cells. Um, as it may be um, damage or inhibit um, the uh, mitochondria in the tubular cells. Um, this is a photo taken from a biopsy sample with using the electro microscopy, uh, where we can see the very diverse shape of the mitochondria, which is in black is mitochondria. I mean, damage the mitochondria in the rounded shape and the square shape and many other shapes. Um, since uh, TDF has been used since 2003, we have seen a small number of patients who have experienced TDF tuberopathy or TDF induced renal dysfunction. However, in 2010, there was a review um, and the meta-analysis of the 17 studies to evaluate how, ex what is the extent of TDF-induced renal dysfunction. And then, this was a very, actually a very good review, and it concluded that TDF use is associated with a statistically significant loss of renal function. However, the clinical magnitude of this effect was modest. So, the game is over, so maybe TDF is safe. Maybe the, we don't need to care about the TDF nephrotoxicity or TDF-induced renal dysfunction. Is it so? Um, because low body, weight, low body weight is a risk factor for TDF nephrotoxicity, it has been shown in the animal models, and also it was shown um, in a cohort of the patient from, I think it was a UK cohort, shown that the uh, low body weight was a risk factor for TDF nephrotoxicities. 
we thought maybe nephro TDF nephrotoxicity is more severe among, for example, Japanese patient, considering our patient has a smaller body stature. For example, when, when we can see this, um, Japanese male with age 30 to 34, the median weight is 68.7 kilograms, whereas American male with age 30 to 39, it's 88. So maybe 20 kilograms heavier compared with the Japanese individuals. So is TDF related to renal dysfunction still modest among patients with low body weight, such as Japanese patient? It was a uh, study question given by Dr. Oka for my PhD. So I would like to introduce a series of studies we have done at our clinical center. And then also um, the last study will be the, that one among the Asian patient from our region. So the first one is observational single center study to investigate the long-term TDF nephrotoxicity in patient with low body weight. So we included treatment naive Japanese patient who started TDF containing ALT, and then treatment naive patient who started abacavir as a control. We saw uh, t um, uh, the primary exposure was TDF use over the control, which is abacavir, and then we applied the following three needle outcomes. One, more than 10 decrement in EGF wall. Two, more than 25% decrement in EGF wall. Three, EGF wall of less than 60. And then logistic regression model was constructed for the association between TDF use and each of renal outcome. And then this is a characteristic, but characteristic of the study patient. The number of was 792 patient. They were mostly um, uh, MSM, Japanese MSM, and then their median body weight was 63 kilograms, and then notably, majority of them are on protease inhibitor, ritonavir boosted protease inhibitor. I think this is important. And then when we see the results, the usage of TDF was associated with all three renal outcomes more than 10 decrement in GFR, more than 25% decrement in GFR, and eGFR of less than 60, with statistical significance. Also, when we stratify the patient by body weight, it was interesting find, to find that the effect of TDF use on renal function decrement more than 10 in eGFR was more evident among patients weighing less than 70 kilograms than those with um, more than 70 kilograms. When we look at the patient who weighted less than 70 kilograms, uh, TDF was statistically associated with uh, renal function decrement. However, for those weighted with more than 70 kilograms, it was not statistically associated. When we see the EGF change from baseline to five years in treatment naive patients treated with either TDF or control, which is abacavir, we see the, um, the adjusted mean loss in G EGF relative to the control increased significantly over time, meaning that difference in GF between two arms increased as time goes. And then at five years, the difference was 10.3 in GFO. So as a summary, TDF use over the control of a career was associated with more than 10 decrement in GFO, more than 25% decrement in GFO, and also eGFO of less than 60. And then the loss in GFO TDF users relative to the control increased continuously up to five years. The effect of TDF use was more evident among patients weighing less than 70 kilograms than those with more than 70 kilograms. Let me show you another, another study which investigated um, incidence of CKD and the renal function decrement after initiation of ALT among Asian HIV patients. So this time we included Asian HIV treatment naive patients over 19 years who initiated ALT. 
And then we defined CKD as EGF, EGF1 less than 60 for at least 90 days. So when we see the incidence of CKD among these study patients of a total of 1,383, we saw 150 patients um, developed CKD with an incidence of 20.6 per 1,000 patient years. And then also TDF use was associated with CKD with adjusted odds ratio of 1.8. When we compare the EGF decrement before and after initiation of ALT, we see the decrement of EGF wow after initiation of ALT. And it was especially fast. I mean, EGF wow rapidly declined for the first three months of ALT initiation. It's a bit complicated, but the uh, ALT initiation was associated with a faster rate of EGF decline, as we can see here. Um, this is for the old patient, TDF, those who use TDF, and the no TDF users. So this is a pre-ALT slope, before they start ALT, how much EGF decline per year. And this is a slope of the EGF how much EGF declined after the first three years they started ALT. And then this is a difference between th these two columns as shown here. We, we can see that <clears throat> in all patient, um, after ALT initiation, AL ALT decrement was more steep. And then when we look at the cases who initiated TDF, the uh, EGF was significantly more declined. I mean, um, the TDF usage was significantly associated with a faster rate of EGF decline. Meaning the, the difference between this and this was statistically as insignificant. So this is a summary for this study. CKD stage three developed for 11% of Asian HIV patients who initiated ALT with incidence of 21 per 1,000 patient years. And TDF use was associated with development of CKD. And then EGFO declined after ALT initiation for 1.88 per year, which is a little bit larger compared with the cohort study from US or maybe from uh, the data from healthy individuals. Okay, I have shown two of our studies which was conducted at our clinical center and then um, we receive always the same question. The majority of our patient or at that time was on protease inhibitors, which is, uh, with, which is a larger molecule and may be associated with a renal dysfunction and then maybe can be a risk factor for TDF nephrotoxicities. So maybe it's, our result is not applicable where NNRTI is a mainstream of TDF treatment. So, those results are, is, are the, those, those results going to be the same among NNRTI population? That's a question. Um, this is a data from TEHOD, Treat Asia HIV Observational Cohort, in which our center is a part of it, and then which includes, I think, 13 countries and areas. So we try to examine the same question with the data from TEHOD. And then we included 2,500, and we try to see what happens after initiation of TDF. This is an EGFO for the non-TDF users, and then this is an EGFO for the TDF users. And then um, most of them were using NNRTI. As we can see, the protease inhibitors are used by only 18.7% of the patient. And then the body structures are also small. As we can see, the median body weight was 56 kilograms, which is even smaller than our patient. Also, in the same study, cumulative incidence of CKD was associated with TDF use with an adjusted hazard ratio of 2.56, and it was significant. 
So we can say that among age, Asians living with HIV, most, mostly on NNRTI, and then with low body weight, which was a median of 56 kilograms, TDF use was associated with a decrease in EGF4 during follow-up, compared with non-TDF users. Also, TDF users also associated, associated with development of CKD. So um, for Asians living with HIV, renal function should be carefully monitored, especially for those on TDF and those at risk for renal dysfunction. Um, okay, I would like to briefly introduce another our study, which tried to investigate the utility of urinary biomarkers for predicting prognosis of renal function for HIV patient on TDF. So this is um, urine beta to microglobulin, which is a low molecular weight protein freely filtered by the glomerulus here, freely filtered, and then reabsorbed almost fully in the proximal tubule. This is uh, urine beta to microglobulin is one of the traditional marker for kidney tubular function and known as a marker for tenophobia tuberopathy. For example, Dr. Gatanaga has been examining this marker for a long time. So we tried to study um, the utility of this marker, urine beta to microglobulin, for the prediction of TDF-related renal dysfunction. Because for the TDF nephrotoxicity, tuberopathy occurs first, and then maybe the renal function decrement follows after the tuberopathy. So if we can monitor the tuberopathy, maybe we can predict whether this patient is going to experience renal function decrement. Um, so we defined the, use, the beta-2 microglobulin, which, is, which was measured succeeding and closest to the start of TDF within 180 days as beta-2M after TDF. And then we applied four renal endpoints. And then we tried to um, do the logistic regression analysis to, use, to estimate the association between beta-2M after TDF and the occurrence of each of the renal endpoints. Also, association between beta-2 microglobin after TDF and the trend of longitudinal EGF-4 value after initiation of TDF was estimated with a mixed effect model. So what we found was uh, the value of beta-2M after TDF was associated with three of the four renal outcomes. And also, beta-2 after TDF was significantly associated with a trend of longitudinal EGF value after initiation of TDF. And then, uh, the cutoff value of uh, one, uh, 1,700 was identified as the optimal cutoff value. When we stratify the patient, patient's EGFR by um, urine mic beta-2 microglobulin by um, 1,700. People with, people having uh, more than uh, 1,700 beta-2M have um, more decrement in EGF4 compared with those who have lower beta-2M values. So this is summary. Um, the beta-2 microglobulin measured within 180 days of TDF initiation was significantly associated with more than 20 decrement, more than 25% decrement, and EGFR less than 60. Beta 2M after TDF was significantly associated with a trend of longitudinal EGFR value after initiation of TDF. Best cut off value was 1700. In clinical practice, measuring beta 2 microglobin soon after the start of a TDF may be useful to predict which patients are likely to experience TDF related renal dysfunction renal dysfunction in the future. This is the last slide. So as all HIV patients are recommended to start a lifelong ALT, the management of ALT related to adverse events is very important. Long-term monitoring of renal function is warranted in patients, especially with low body weight, who start a TDF containing ALT. Urine beta to microglobulin is useful in prediction of TDF related to renal dysfunction. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Tate Nishijima.